Yeah, that's nice. Come this way. Nice. Nice. Come no, that's fine, that's fine, then. Well, that's fine. We first had the idea of doing the piece in the late 70s when uh, Roger Moore was doing a Muppet show one day and he was going to sing uh, Talk to the Animals so he called me and said would I go out to Elstree Street with him for the Muppet show and over lunch we had lunch with Jim Henson and Frank Oz and Jim brought up because Roger was singing a song from Dr. Doolittle whether there'd ever been a thought of doing it in the theatre and I said we'd love to, but the whole point would have to be getting reality into the animals. Now, Polynesia, of course, of all the animals, is really the major principle, because she has to appear and disappear and, and, and do all sorts of different things. Did you hear all that, Polynesia? Yes, I was hiding. Uh, actually, I guess it's what you'd call an, a, a voice of or a voice over. I'm playing the part of a parrot that is the sort of main catalyst in the musical theatre version of Dr. Doolittle. She's 200 years old, she speaks 2,000 languages, and she's really Dr. Doolittle's closest uh, uh, friend, if you will, certainly animal friend, and she's the one that helps him uh, learn all the animal languages and, and uh, looks after his life, so to speak. Sort of try to try to be terribly professional, um, but I'm like a kid, you know, sort of gleefully wondering. I sang with her yesterday morning, you know. We were sitting around a piano. I was sitting around a piano with Julie Andrews, and we were singing a song. And I thought, well, my God, this is extraordinary. So, so outwardly, of course, it's always a great pleasure, but inwardly, yeah. <laughs> When I see my fellow men consuming sirloin steak And I find myself enjoying tea and Dundee cake There is really only one conclusion I can make I'm a devoted vegetarian The thing is with Doolittle is that um, he does have this very, very special relationship with animals Better than people, that's the whole story and so, um, so we've been working on that to make sure that I do look like, as if I must be completely at ease with those animals, that the way you stroke the parrot. And then we had some great people who said, you know, you, you obviously have never had a parrot. So I said, well, no, well, no, no, I haven't actually. Well, that's not the way to stroke it. A um, parrot wouldn't like that. You know, you do it this way rather than that way. Because it is vital that his relationship with these animals is absolutely right. In film, you build something beautiful and perfect, and if it works for a day, that's all it needed to do. With a theater production like this, it's got to work every day and sometimes twice a day. So all of this has been a pretty steep learning curve for us, but great fun. The Henson people are uncannily brilliant, and also they're such a lovely group of people. What they do, which is what's so charming for the show, is they create the reality, and then they just put a touch of character into each creature, beyond reality, enough to sort of personalize it and give it the character without going into caricature. When the puppet has been uh, animated, that's mechanized, it all works, there's a performer in it. When we're happy with all that, then we go on to an art working and finishing stage, which is obviously uh, painting, making good any defects which occur in the cast, uh, and then applying hair or feathers or um, whatever else is, uh, it is that's covering the creature. In a production meeting we had, I said, you know, if, if Polynesia can speak 2,000 languages, which she's supposed to do, she wouldn't sound like a parrot, she'd sound like Julie Andrews. And it was literally that sentence that gave me the thought that, well, it might as well be Julie Andrews. I was very happy when he asked me to do it. It's just fun to work together as we have before. The truth is, darling boy, you prefer animals to people. But animals are so much nicer than people. I understand animals, and they understand me. Then be an animal doctor. Let's, let's leave this now and we, and we go on. It's and, coming. Yes, it is. Yes. It's more sort of gossipy. And, yes. um, it's hard because I'm trying to isolate it and not overlap him, you see. You can overlap. You can overlap, oh, overlap as much as you So right. you can't, all right. Yeah. Oh, great. That's why I'm in here. Okay. <laughs> not allowed in there, not allowed it's in the It's a shame. Room. I'm new in the business, you understand. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? I, I can now say that I've played nuns, uh, nannies, and bird. 
Polynesia think what it would mean if I could talk to the animals? Just imagine it, chatting to a, a chimp in chimpanzee. Imagine talking to a tiger, chatting to a cheetah. What a neat achievement that would be. If I could talk to the animals. Learn their languages. Maybe take a, an animal degree. Good idea. I'd study elephant and eagle. Buffalo and beagle. Alligator. Guinea pig. And flea. To name but a few, you could converse in polar bear and python. And I would curse in fluent kangaroo. <laughs> if people ask you, can you speak rhinoceros? I'd say of Corsarus. Can't you? You know I can. In a way, Doolittle sort of epitomises everything that's rather uptight about the Englishman. I mean, he says himself he's good with animals, not very good with people. And the heroine, Emma, has another sort of uptightness, which is to do with her aristocratic upbringing, and she's rather shrewish at the beginning and rather arrogant. How dare you? I beg your pardon? General Bellows... <laughs> he certainly does. <laughs> ..is my uncle. I'm sorry. Oh, is that an apology? Oh, I'm sorry, he's your uncle. <laughs> and I'm sorry I'm his niece. Yes, it must be terrible. I sense it will have a wide appeal, but you can never, ever know what the end of the story is going to be, but I'll tell you on July the 15th. <laughs> I'd study every living creature's language so I could speak to all of them on sight. If friends say, can he talk in grab or pelican? What should I say? You'd say like helicopter. What should I be? You'd be right. That's right. And if you just stop to think of it, there's no doubt of it, you will have a place in history. For I can walk with the animal. Yes. Talk with the animal. Yes, yes. Right. And squeak and squawk with the animal. And squeak and squawk with the animals. 